So we just had uh, breakfast this morning. This uh, cereal with raisins is a very good object uh, to meditate on. So with each spoonful we took, we started chewing the spoonful, chewing, 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 many times. Again, 40 times per mouthful. Every time you're chewing, you should be noting chewing. Chewing, 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 and then swallowing, swallowing. If you hear that sound of the crunching, you can note that as hearing. Hearing, hearing, chewing, 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 chewing. Is everybody doing that kind of, uh, are you trying that? Is it helpful? So this is, by noting that, that kind of keeps the mind from wandering off into space and it brings our concentration into the present moment. So we have the ball in our hand, we take a spoonful, put it in the mouth, we know the chewing, 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 swallowing, swallowing. Then we make the same motion again. Then one thing at a time. We want to train the mind to do one thing at a time. <clears throat> That's mindfulness. When we're walking, we want to note the lifting, moving, placing, standing, standing, turning, turning. Were you able to, uh, was that helpful when you were walking this morning? Okay. All this is about uh, purifying the mind. Uh, whenever anger arises again, you note anger. Anger, anger, anger. Whenever greed arises in the mind, you know greed, greed, greed. Let it go, come back to the breath. If the mind is just wandering, you note wandering, wandering, thinking, thinking, and then come back to the breath. Whether it's rising and falling, or in and out. <coughs> so we're trying to purify the mind. So, for this little talk, I just want to talk about, when we talk about purifying the mind, we're eradicating all kinds of greed, hatred, and delusion. So, in the Abhidhamma, there's 14 unwholesome states of mind that arise. Through our mindfulness practice, each one of these 14 gets knocked off, completely eradicated, and then that's how we become pure. That's how we reach a pure mind. So the number one is delusion or ignorance. That's the basic foundation for all suffering, is ignorance. So, and ignorance means not knowing the Four Noble Truths. The truth of suffering, the truth of the cause of suffering, the cessation of suffering, and then the Eightfold Path. So that is the like definition of ignorance. Second one would be uh, lack of moral dread. Third one, lack of moral shame. So those two things would be eliminated. That's people who you know go out, get drunk, you fall over drunk, you <coughs> on yourself. You know, and you don't care, or you know, people who don't don't bathe, uh, they don't they don't have any shame over their appearance. Fourth one would be restlessness, which we probably feel. You know, after you've been working all week, you come here and you try to settle down. You feel a restlessness. Uh, you know, the mind is racing. We're trying to slow down the mind. So the restlessness kind of uh, keeps going. Then uh, we have greed. Greed is the, it can be greed for sense pleasures, or just the greed for existence. Next one, wrong view. That's the view of the self. Uh, that would be cut off. 
So then you would know that there is no self. So that would be a right view. If you think there's a self in this mind or body, uh, that would be a wrong view. Next one, conceit. There's three kinds of conceit uh, in Buddhism. The inferiority conceit, I'm less than you. The equality conceit, I'm equal to you. And the superiority conceit, I'm superior to you. So all three of those are conceit. So we have, in the United States, we have like equality. It's like, so that would be an equality conceit. And then, then people who uh, denigrate themselves, it's like, oh, I'm just a poor person or something, but actually they're rich. Or self-effacing, the humor. Um, it's all kind of a conceit. So the Arhat won't have any kind of conceit. Even though he's superior to everybody, he won't have a conceit that he is superior. There's no I, no me, no mine with the Arhat. <clears throat> Next one would be every kind of uh, anger, every kind of hatred would be completely eliminated. So if someone insults you, no anger would arise. If someone hits you, no anger would arise. That mind is completely pure. So we get to that by noting, being mindful whenever anger arises in our meditation, in our, in our, in our daily life. Again, uh, we note the anger, it gets smaller, 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 eventually it gets eliminated. Then happiness, basically you're always happy, or even-minded. The next two would be um, envy, envy, jealousy over others, uh, good fortune. That's an ugly, um, unwholesome state. And stinginess, we don't want to share, share with others. We want to be miserly, all things to ourselves. So that would be eliminated. Then worry, every kind of worry would be eliminated. Then the sloth and torpor, which is that sleepiness. Uh, slip in a state that's eliminated. And the last one is doubt. Doubt would be the uh, in the elimination of skeptical doubt about the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, the triple gem. You would know that you know, this is the right path. The Buddha is uh, the ultimate highest person in the world. So with the Sotapanna, uh, the first path, four of those are eliminated at the, at the first path. That would be doubt in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, and the wrong view, which would be like the view of self, Sakaya Ditti, and then the envy and stinginess uh, would be eliminated. So that's four out of 14 eliminated at the first path. So that's that's a pretty good percentage for just just seeing the Dhamma. And uh, as you're going more with your meditation, each of these things, these little uh, things that are left over, they seem to be real defilements. And you see them as defilements and it's like, uh, these are in me, that's kind of a dirt you know, that needs to be washed away. So whenever, like, uh, greed, lust, anger arises, it's like, oh, that's, that's not good, that's not wholesome. And so then we start focusing on those you know, two things, greed and hatred. And by noting them, again, they get smaller, 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 and then eventually disappear. So we're trying to purify ourselves and this is the way to purify it. By looking directly at whatever defilements arise, look at it, note it, label it, and let it go. 
then they become less and less powerful uh, at that present moment and in the future. So then you can get some distance. So anger may arise, and you can kind of see it coming. Then you have a choice, you know, should I say something, or should I act? And there's a pause there, and that's a safety, sort of a safety time, safety time zone. It's like, you have a moment, oh, I shouldn't hit that person. So then you don't, all right? Or I want to say something right away. But you have three, three or four seconds where it's, you pause, oh, and then you don't say anything. So then you're not accumulating uh, unwholesome karma. So if we hit somebody, that's, that's unwholesome. If we say something uh, in anger towards somebody, that comes back on us. No, I mean, we look ugly. You know, when someone's uh, angry, they look ugly. So we're trying not to be, uh, look ugly. We want to look pleasant and beautiful. So by keeping away from anger, we get the, those qualities. Looking nice, pleasant, happy. So this is going to be part of a, so we're going to finish this part with uh, the meditation. Correct? Oh. So, so get adjusted. Again, feel the body on the cushion. And kind of settle yourself into the cushion. Make the cushion your friend. This is my cushion, this is my friend. Relax, relax the body into the, into the cushion. <laughs> Try to note every thought, every thought when it arises, no thinking, thinking. Try not to move, try not to adjust your position. Pain arises, just see it, accept it, note it, pain, pain, pain. Come back to the breath. Now, if you can pay close attention to the breath or these objects, you'll find um, a sign that you're meditating well and concentrated is that an hour sitting will seem like 10 minutes. Time will go by quickly. So after a sitting, if, time, if, if the bell rings, and you think, wow, that was fast, then you know you're doing, you that your concentration is good. If, it, if an hour seems like eternity, we're moving, we're adjusting, the mind's scattered, then we know, ah, oh, that wasn't, we're not concentrated. So then the next time you sit, then you want to pay closer and closer attention to each breath. So I'm going to catch every in-breath, every out-breath, every rise and every fall. As soon as a thought arises, I'm going to note that thought quickly. But thinking, thinking, then come right back to the breath. If there's any other disturbance, you note it quickly. Not thinking, thinking, hearing, hearing. Come back to the breath. In-breath, out-breath, out-breath, out-breath. Let's, let's try and see. 